My good mate John Davies was down from New South Wales with his son Brock for their first samba hunt. I had scouted a few of my regular hunting areas in advance and worked out where the best opportunities of getting him a good representative stag existed. The first morning saw us cutting across open country in the moonlight to get to our high vantage point in the bush. The only problem was there that were four deer out feeding on the bush edge, with one of them being a stag with a nice wide set of 22-23 inch antlers. We could have waited for another 15 minutes for it to get light enough for John to take the shot but I knew there were other stags in the area with better quality antlers, so I decided to pass him up. Not wanting to spook him and the others and have them honk and crash off into the bush, we decided to backtrack and do a big arc around them as they fed their way back into cover. This delay made us later than I wanted to be getting to my lookout spot. From the lookout we could see about six deer, including a stag with an extra wide set of antlers trailing a hind and a calf directly below us. The hind was obviously in Oestrius and the stag was tailgating her wherever she went. I'm always on the lookout for a hind with a two to three month old calf at foot as I know that she will come into season again once she has weaned her calf. At that time any stags in the area will be likely to be following her around until she is prepared to stand and mate. If I can I will keep going back to the same area where I've seen the hind with the young calf at foot as she won't travel very far away from her home range. Stags will continue to frequent this area, checking on her level of reception till she is ready to mate. I have witnessed a stag trying to hunt a hind's calf away from her and trying to prevent it from suckling. I have also seen the same stag targeting a hind with a calf at foot the following weekend after the first sighting. As the hind gets closer to Oestrius, the stag is more vulnerable as he has only two things on his mind keeping the hind for himself and mating with her. This is the time that you are more likely to see several stags hanging around and following the stag that is holding the hind. Bites usually occur if a more dominant stag arrives on the scene, but I've also seen two lesser stags having a fair income bite whilst following a dominant stag with a hind in season. Whilst the stag may be less wary at this time, you also have the extra sets of eyes, ears and noses to contend with from the other deer in the area. I suggested to John that he pass on this stag as there was a good chance that one of the better quality stags that I knew to be in the area may move in on this hind. Whilst the spread of this stag's antlers made him look impressive, his inner and outer top times were lacking and a bit too short. The next morning we were back at the same spot before first light and spotted this stag with 16 to 17 inch antlers mooching around. He was checking out the area where the stag and the osterous hikling hind were the day before. He looked like a child in a lolly shop sneaking around to see what he could steal. This is typical behaviour of a lesser stag that knows his place and doesn't want to get too close in case he gets a flogging from the stag that's holding the hind. The four of us and Jussie the dog were all seated perched on the rocks with our faces and hands covered and a slight breeze blowing into our face. Yes. 
As the stag climbed up the face, he stared in our direction several times. He knew that something wasn't quite right and that something looked different to what he normally saw at that location. This young stag had obviously been in a wallow early in the morning as he had a clear water mark up the side of his body. Being seated and not moving a muscle while he stared at us saw him relax again and go back to circling around trying to pick up the scent of the other deer in the area. As we humans are the only creature that moves around in the bush in the vertical form, deer are less likely to suspect danger if you lower your body profile. I have had deer walk within several metres of me whilst I've been seated or laying down on the ground. That afternoon we decided to try another area where I had built one of my tree stands. This spot had been quite productive in the past with several nice stags taken from it in the late afternoon. I climbed down from my tree stand and went back to look in the opposite direction and spotted this stag out laying in the ferns chewing his cud about 1100 metres away. I let John know that I had spotted a shooter and that he would need to come quickly as we would have to do a big arc to dodge the ruse and get the wind in our favour. For the most part, we would not have a visual on the stag, so I got John's young son Brock to sit at my squatting scope and keep an eye on him, so he could let us know if the stag got up and walked back into the cover. You can be John. Got a good clear view. You tell me, you tell me when you're ready and I'll yell out. First, you got him though. Yeah, do you? Yep.
despite being mortally wounded, the stag still managed to turn and run off as if uninjured. This is often the case with samba deer. Hang on, oh. hang on, right on. Josie! Right on. Well, I was up the tree stand, Noel's tree stand. Noel called us on the radio, said, get out of here quick. So I left all my gear up there, brought my gun down. We stalked in. We couldn't see him at first. Brock had the spot and scope. He was, he was the eyes from up high. Then we got right down there, couldn't see him behind these blackberry bushes. Then uh, we, we crawled right in. Noel knew where he was. And then, uh, yeah, shot him. Then uh, we went back, got Juzzy. And then Juzzy tracked it straight in, and here it is. Yeah. What a ripper, mate. Stoked. What, what rifle are you using? Uh, Remington 700 308. Uh, using a 150 grain. And uh, yeah, hit him a little bit low, but seemed to do the damage. <laughs> Well done. Well Very done, happy. mate. Thanks, Grubby. Thanks, Rob. Thanks, Noel. Thanks, Ball Thanks, Boys. <laughs> yeah, all good. Right, eh? Now the hard work begins. Yeah. Yeah. Fine trophy for a first amber stag with great Shanghai tops, 26 inch long antlers, and 32 inch wide spread. To make it even more memorable, Brock got to see it all unfold through the spotting scope.